what you're about to witness is a nightmare unfolding. Peace out, my dudes. Hey, what is up you guys? I look like complete chaos right now, but that is okay because I'm only human. Tomorrow marks the day for the Comedy Christ show in Baltimore, Maryland. I am super nervous because I still have so much to do and I don't even know where to begin. I know I already said this in a clip, but I'm probably gonna cut that part out. I have the fan on in the background, so you guys are probably gonna hear that. Hopefully with audio editing, I can kind of cancel some of that background noise out, but I have been smoking in my room, so there's like a layer of smoke in my room, so. I had to put on the fan before I started recording or else all you guys would see is smoke. So tomorrow it looks like I'm not gonna have an assistant for the show, which means I'm gonna have to go in alone, which means I have to try and fit all of my stuff I need into one bag, which if you know me, it's very difficult because I usually carry two to three backpacks with me at all times. A little bit of a Shane Dawson moment going on, why not? Ugh, I'm so stressed over here. I'm getting a headache. I hate doing intros and outros because I feel like they're so like, they're supposed to be so planned out. And I watch so many YouTubers who have like planned out outros and intros and I'm just sitting here like, I have no idea what to say to lead into this video. Other than the fact I look like complete chaos. So as you guys can probably tell, my ADHD is through the roof. It is April 21st though, I think it's around 9 or 10 a.m. which is early for me to be recording myself, which is why I'm like, the light is killing me. I think I'm actually gonna flat iron my hair today and put like some product in it, keep it nice for tomorrow, just in case I don't have time to fully fly iron my hair, separate my hair, put products in my hair tomorrow. Um, I want to have like my hair ready. I want to make sure I'm 100% ready to get out this door because tomorrow is Easter Monday. We have to go to Baltimore from practically DC. Plus everyone complaining about the measles in Baltimore, which honestly I don't care about. I don't care. I'm there to do my job. I'm there to work. If anybody gets in my way, they're gonna get bitch slapped. Because I have not seen my friend Eric in a little over two years and I'm ready to see him again. I'm ready to hug him. I'm ready to photograph his band again. It's been a while. If a lot of you don't know, um, Eric13 of Call Me Christ has been one of the very few artists in the industry to know me from like very young teenagehood into my 20s. So it's very awkward for me to see him again for the first time in over two years and like, <sighs> I've lost all this weight. I look weird, I look old now, I look hella stressed, but it's okay because I'm forgetting all that, leaving all that behind, and just enjoying the show. I'm so excited. I hope you guys also enjoyed the 420 videos I put up yesterday. They were videos I recorded a little over two weeks ago. Um, just kind of forgot about the footage, kind of forgot I even recorded a video because of how high I was. And while I was backing up my phone, I found a bunch of videos and I was like, okay, well, I have about 12 hours to edit this, but I can try to get these videos up for 420 and I actually did it, which is insane because I've never like edited two videos, edited two thumbnails and get them up in the same day. So that was extremely weird for me. If I can't link them in the video somehow, they will be in the description box down below. Um, one was my first week two video, which I think is still trying to get approved. And then um, the second was me just getting high and talking about my tremors and talking about a little bit briefly about why I uh, smoke weed for health reasons. And a lot of people don't understand I also smoke it to kind of keep calm my mental state because as you guys have been calling me out on social media lately, my ADHD is very, very visible, um, especially on camera. I hate making eye contact. I hate doing things, but... Um, with medical marijuana, you know, it kind of keeps my brain a little bit more mellowed out, keeps my anxiety from getting too extreme, which is why, you know, I'm smoking a shit ton today and I will be smoking a shit ton tomorrow just to get through this concert because I feel like my body is going to be killing me afterwards. I'm not sure what to do. I don't really know what's going on anymore. I don't know what this video is. I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye. It's the night before the show and I'm actually writing a bit right now. I got inspired by my friend Nathan to start like writing daily diaries, if not weekly diaries. Um, but I'm starting off with a weekly diary so far, kind of like summing up my week. And I'm 
currently writing a pre-show like night before review or I don't know if it's a review, I don't know what it is, but something for ELP um, to kind of just talk about like what I'm doing the night before the show, how I'm getting prepared, and I'll probably put that up on Exit Live either tonight or early tomorrow. I'm going to try and shoot for tonight though um, so you guys can kind of read about what I'm doing even though it's really boring. If you're new to my channel, by the way, subscribe if you are. You can subscribe by hitting that little red button down below and you can also turn on my post notifications while you're there to get a notification for every time I post a new video. Oh my goodness, that's a lot to say. Anyways, if you guys are new to my channel or just new to my life in general and do not know, I'm the founder of Exit Life Press. It was named after um, the late artist Little Peep. Um, it's really hard for me to talk about him, but I was supposed to photograph him two years ago now, um, almost two years ago, but, uh, yeah, the reason why I renamed, um, Off the Press into Exit Life is for that reason, and, uh, so far it looks like everybody's really been enjoying it, everyone really likes the new design and everything, but you can follow Exit Life Press on Instagram as well, on Twitter, all that good stuff, so you can get, like, notifications and see posts of when we post new articles and stuff. I am currently looking for some new photographers and writers to add to the magazine as well so it's not just me doing all the work because um, a lot of my team members are going back to school or have you know full-time jobs which I don't because I'm 100% an artist right now so I'm mostly like kind of taking over ELP for right now until I can find some more people. But yeah, add up Exit Life Press on all your social media, add us on YouTube, I'm now creating YouTube for Exit Life Press, so basically on my channel it's going to be my get ready with me plus the show, and then on Exit Life Press it's going to be like separate performances, full show, all that good stuff, so if you don't want to deal with my face before all your recap videos, you can now go over to Exit Life Press and see just bands, just the music, just the artists, just the performances. This will also be how I will be doing New Year's Day on May 1st. I'm looking at my calendar. Possibly Youngblood on May 15th. I might have to edit that out. I'm not sure if I'm photographing Youngblood again just yet. And then obviously Rockfest in July. So that's kind of how I'm going to be doing it from now on. Um, the reason why I post like Get Ready With Me plus the recap on here is because that's what I enjoy. Those are the videos I like to watch. Um, so those are the kind of videos I want to do on my channel. But for, you know, the fans who just want to see the music and don't want to deal with my face and deal with the long rants and talking like I'm doing right now, just go add the personal Exit Live Press YouTube because it will be a lot easier for everyone. So yeah, there's all that. I just thought I would add that little bit of an update because I haven't really recorded anything today. I kind of want to save like my memory and all my talking for tomorrow because I feel like I'm going to be recording a lot tomorrow. Um, at least trying to record a lot. I'm going to Baltimore Soundstage again and if you guys lost, let's try that again. If you guys watched my last video of me at Baltimore Soundstage, it was not good. Security was really, really shitty and uh, yeah, they, they were really mean to us. So I'm going to hope that I can kind of record as much as possible. We'll see what I can do and hope for the best. I'm not really sure I'm going to be getting a lot of like one-on-one -on -one time with the artist unfortunately because this venue sucks but I'm going to hope for the best. Um, so yeah. Also considering I know that I'm not going to finish recording this full video until tomorrow night and editing takes me forever. Like ever since 2019 started I've been on social media every day like rebranding, writing, doing different jobs, doing different gigs. It's slowly paying off with my YouTube channel, but it's just a lot. It's a lot to become like known and get your name out there by yourself, but uh, I'm trying. I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, I think I'm talking way too much. I'm getting sidetracked. I'm gonna finish watching my stand-up comedy special on Netflix. I'm gonna finish writing this, and then I'm probably just gonna call it a night so I can get up early in the morning and get ready. <sighs> I'm so tired already just thinking about this. All right, well, I will see you guys in the morning. Hey, what is up you guys? It is 3 p.m. It is the day of the show. I have 90 minutes to get ready and I don't know what to do. Um, I slept in until about 11 o'clock, I would say, because I wanted to make sure I was fully rested for today. Um, got caught up talking to one of my roommates just about random stuff. We went to the gas station, got some drinks. I got some cigarettes and some rolling papers um, so I can smoke safely at the venue tonight and not really get caught by security. Yeah, I now have like less 
then an hour and a half to fly in my hair again, do my makeup, eat, get ready, and then throw on my dress, my outfit, and walk out the door. I don't feel like doing any of this. I'm honestly so tired. If you guys can't tell, my anxiety is so bad today. I'm honestly sweating so bad, and I honestly don't know if my makeup will even stay on today, even with the setting spray, so... I've been really hooked to listening to Tom McDonald. If you don't know him, he is a rapper who's coming up, and he is amazing. I love his music so much. And I just really by the way, I should also point out that um, I'm not doing my makeup professionally at all today. I'm literally just slapping it on because I don't have time to do my makeup. Like, I usually do eyebrows first, but I don't have time to be carving out my foundation stuff today. So. We're gonna hope I look semi-okay by the time this process is done. Hi, Casper. All right, so it is officially four o'clock. I think I have a half hour until we are ready to go, but I'm officially ready. I have my nice, wonderful goth attire going on. I'm a little out of breath because I just ran up and down the stairs like twice. Oh my god. And I'm fat, so. But this is one of the outfits I'm going to be wearing to Rockfest with different shoes that are not here yet, but I did order them. But I really like this. It makes me feel really confident for, you know, a plus size woman my age, you know. It makes it sound like I'm old. I'm 20. I'm turning 21 this year, but it, it makes me feel confident. So yeah. Okay, so we are on our way to the venue. It's a little before 4.30, which is okay, which means we're running a little bit early. So I will see you guys when I have another update. We're just gonna go drive for an hour in traffic.
successfully made it. I'm the first person in the menu, except for the, obviously the bands and whatnot. But I'm gonna go get my camera set up and finally pee because I've been waiting for an hour to take a piss. Oh my god, I'm just, oh my god. Ugh. That really has to be put there, really, Jesus. So I'm actually happy I'm the first person in here because I can set up my camera bag and stuff in the bathroom and fix my underwear that are showing. My ass has been showing outside for so long. I'm sweating so much now. And my foundation, where my glasses are, is coming off like usual. I'm kind of upset because I hid my weed in my bra and they didn't even check me. So. Alright, let's go. The venue is pretty empty compared to what I'm used to right now because the doors just opened. But I don't know what to do. I don't know how to waste time. Like, I feel like I look awkward just walking around the camera.
so I just touched on my makeup and I just got done for photographing the first band and everything is so loud I'm gonna go buy some head like earphones because or my friend just texted me um, I can't I can't hear anything so I might have to go buy like earplugs because my hearing is shot and I'm all the way in the bathroom and it's like ringing I don't know if you guys can hear like how high pitch everything is but oh my god uh. by the way I don't know if you guys can hear me but this is how antisocial I am I rather hide in the bathroom and wait for the next band to go on than go out there because I hate people
Always sleeping on the ground and yeah. Mm -hmm. So they said to wait for someone, but that was no, no. We, they're gonna come. Okay. Right. Ambulance is on its way. Okay. 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 Well, tonight did not go anything like I was expecting it to. I can't even talk properly. I'm so tired. Um, my makeup is horrendous because I was all over the photo pit, all over the venue tonight, getting my shots. I was sweating my makeup off. I was reapplying it. It's just not a good look. Um, but the first band, the chick, I'm pretty sure I, you guys will see it in the video. But she was spitting out at the crowd what I thought was fake blood but now that I'm in light it's blue and it's staining my hands my arm I don't know if you can see but my leg so that was interesting I also have one second don't look at my butt <laughs> everyone has been looking at my butt tonight so much was showing I'm happy like being plus size all my life um, I never really used to dress confidently or show off this much skin in public, but I got so many compliments tonight, especially from my band members and security and fans just in general. It was, it was really nice, but let's kind of take this from the beginning. I'm going to make this outro as quick as possible because my makeup is just horrendous and also I'm tired. So first of all. The chick that was spinning out the stuff was throwing and tearing out Bible pages. And, um, 
one of the other photographers, which we're going to get into that in a second, but he was like, you need to grab those pages because they were stuck to my foot. And he was like, you need to grab those pages. They were meant for you. And I was like, okay, I'll grab them. And there's that. And then I have his business card, but his name is Andy. And uh, it was weird because after the second band was like almost done, I went outside for a smoke break and I saw this photographer one of the other photographers come over and we just like looked at each other and he was like do I know you and I'm like I swear I know you from somewhere and it's not every day even he said it's not every day where photographers meet other people they know and uh <laughs> this is a bit of a backstory and I'll probably go into it later in another video to explain more but this guy Andy used to like come into my MCCC classes it was basically like a youth group um, thing that was going on and I'm not really gonna over explain anything because I'm too tired to talk about the details but basically this guy came into our um, group one day and for like three or four weeks after that and he was talking about you know drug problems how to get yourself off of drugs uh, start talking about you know his battle with heroin for a very long time his battle with being homeless uh, when he first came out to Baltimore when he first came out to Maryland in general um, started talking about you know how he got into photography and he's you know he's older than me and uh, I got his old business card back then because um, it, it was over a year ago now I think it was like April or May of 2018 and uh, he was the guy that taught me how to meditate. He was the guy that got me off of drugs. He didn't get me off of drugs. He helped me. Because um, hearing him talk about like his drug problem and being homeless and hearing that at the time that I was homeless and I was attending, you know, these groups and these classes and stuff, it was really empowering to hear someone else who was homeless like talking about how he got off of drugs and everything. And I just thought it would add this into the video because I'm getting kind of emotional but um he he played like a big part of my life considering he was a complete stranger and uh it was weird because at that time in my life I there was a lot of people giving me advice but I just didn't listen but there was something about him like that really clicked to me and uh, he, he taught me how to meditate, he taught, you know, he was trying to teach everyone, but no one was listening. Um, because at the time I was in a group, in a class full of complete assholes, and I was the only person, like, actually wanting to learn how to get off of drugs and wanting to learn, like, how to not be homeless and struggling for the rest of my life. And about a week after, like, really questioning if I wanted to stay in those classes, he came along and, uh, Unfortunately, he couldn't like finish the classes and by the time like he stopped coming around, I I was really bad with my homeless situation at the time and um I couldn't come to the classes anymore and I got let go due to health reasons and I got let go cuz I was passing out um on the work site and I was passing out in class and I was crying and having anxiety every day cuz I came in with all these problems and I just I couldn't keep my mind together and my body was shutting down and I didn't know why and uh, it was just a lot and um, yeah I'm, I know I'm kind of over talking about this but he's a really cool guy I'll try to take a picture of his uh, card and stuff or put a screenshot of his Instagram or something you guys should go check him out he's a really cool dude and I just thought I would add that in there I would also like to add that all my pictures from tonight's show will be going on my personal social media and also my exit life press magazine the website um all that good stuff i will add all the links in the description box below so you can go travel so you can go check them out as you please while you're down there you can also hit that subscribe button if you're new while you're subscribing you can also hit that little bell to get a notification for every time i post a new video while you're also down there you can give the video a like or a dislike it depends if you like to dislike the video the reason why i'm so tired i feel like i should add this into the video because it really got to me. So I came outside and I was waiting for my friend Eric to come out so I could like get a picture, say hi, give him a hug before, you know, 
he goes back on tour because it's been over two years since the last time I saw him. So, you know, touring and just being an artist in general, your schedules don't always match up. So this was my first time seeing him in over two years. So I really wanted to like talk to him. And uh, I was waiting for a while, but I witnessed something really shitty and it makes me not believe in humanity anymore. And I think that's kind of why I can't really talk tonight and that's why my nerves are shot if you guys can probably tell my my voice is really shaky because I've just had I've had a lot of anxiety tonight. Um so oh my god. So while I was waiting outside, um I thought I saw a drunk guy stumble on outside and hit a car and fall down. What I actually saw was um, a man who apparently was on really heavy drugs and I don't even know what to call it. I guess he was having an episode and um, I don't want to like tell this story to get attention or like say that I know what I'm talking about. I'm mostly saying this so you're not the assholes or you don't act like the assholes that I'm about to talk about in the story. So what happened was this guy was apparently on drugs, was walking all around the street, bumped into a car and started falling down and beating his hands and his knees and his head into the pavement. And uh, he was throwing stuff around and the security at the show, which I'm Probably gonna be recording, but the security at Baltimore Soundstage, one of them I saw recording this, not even helping. Um, and then I was getting caught up talking to a friend, and when I turned back around, there were people saying, um, "There's people recording him," and I'm like, "Excuse me," and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And I turn around, and there's maybe ten guys that look like teenagers recording this guy and throwing trash on him while he's like face down like probably not even awake so I walk over and uh the minute I walk over there's three like grown men there and they're kind of like talking about the situation and I came over and I'm like hi were were those guys recording because the minute I came over like they left and uh I was like, were they recording him? And he was like, yeah, they, they were recording him and throwing trash on him. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And uh, I came over and there was a guy who was apparently a par paramedic. Um, he told me that later, but he was a paramedic and he knew what to do. He like went in, tried helping him, um, left very briefly to go get gloves because he didn't know about the situation, but he handled it completely well. And he handled it better than me because I'm still shaking. But, um, I come over and I have like three or four percent on my phone and I'm like, has anybody called 911? And they're like, no, we didn't even think of that because there's cops right up there. And I'm like, fuck it. And I, I started calling 911 and I put in a report and I was like, hey, I need an ambulance to Baltimore Soundstage. There's, there's a guy passed out and he's, um, foaming from the mouth and he's vomiting and he's bleeding and he's communicating, but it's not well and I don't know if, what's happening. And, uh. They sent paramedics out, and by the time, like, they were sending paramedics out, there was a guy that drove around, and he was like, hey, I just got the two cops up there, got their attention, and told them about the situation. The cops came down, um, started helping him try to, like, clean him up, and uh, asking him his name, trying to get information, and he was not talking. And, um, about ten, five, five, ten minutes later, maybe, um, paramedics show up and they took care of him. He'll be okay. They forgot his pants on the side of the road, but I'm pretty sure that's the least of his worries, but I'll try to add clips in of what I have. And I mostly want to put this in here, not for attention or anything. I mostly was recording because of the situation. Um, the cops helped him, but they were saying really Things that we're saying weren't really nice um, about 
the guy. Um, and I don't want to like throw it out there and make it about race, but let's just say they were white cops joking about white people and how white people wouldn't be doing that, but it's whatever. So I started recording after that. I started recording after some stranger or whatever was talking about like throwing stuff on him behind me. And that's the only reason I started recording, just in case anything were to happen um, and this guy got in more trouble or more danger afterwards, someone would have his back and protect him. And the only reason I do that is because that used to be me. Um, you know, I used to be the homeless person on the side of the road that would get cops, cops called on them. Um, I would have a lot of issues when I was homeless and I wanted to make sure, like, I was recording if anything happened. So the reason I'm kind of telling this story is because it really hit me hard and it really traumatized me um, and really raised my anxiety and I couldn't record. The cops that showed up like from down the street were like, oh, it's okay, we're gonna get paramedics. Oh, it's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this, you don't need to help. And I was like, no, the woman on the phone told me to stay here until the ambulance gets here. I'm not leaving until then. And he was like, no, we got it from here. And he, they just started like, picking this guy up and not even carrying him like he's he's bleeding and they're like oh no no and I'm like he he's bleeding from both of his knees both of his elbows and his head and a little bit of his stomach I'm like he, he's bleeding and the woman on the phone told me not to move him and they're like oh well, well she doesn't know what what she's talking about and I'm like and I was just like well the woman on the phone told me not to move him but I guess you can move him concerned you're just a cop and you want him up and um I don't know there's just something about cops in general that really really get under my skin anytime I'm in a situation where cops are around I always start recording so that's just me I think everyone should do that because the situation was not good in the first place and concerned cops came there from down the street they were like oh yeah we we know him he, this guy's always here he's always sleeping on the side of the road and when they came over he was like oh it's a different guy and I'm like yeah this guy's having an obvious drug overdose and they're like oh we didn't know because his face was down and I started recording after that because even the guy behind me was like oh so you just assumed it was the same guy because they were both african-american and I was like yep that's that's my cue that's when I'm gonna start recording because just getting shady but uh yeah there's that story tonight did not go anything like I was expecting it to I couldn't get a lot of footage because security was shit at this venue I'm never going back to this venue ever again um unless I'm getting paid to because security was not good at all and it never is at Baltimore City Stage <laughs> and I will always complain about that but I couldn't get a lot of footage. Um, didn't record a lot with my phone because there was just so much happening tonight. Um, but I just want to say thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you for supporting my channel through all the drama I somehow get myself into. I know I said it already, but I'm going to say it again. Make sure to subscribe if you're new because I am really close to getting 4,000 watch hours on YouTube. So we need to get a thousand subscribers to my YouTube channel so my channel can finally get monetized and I can start making money and getting new gear and providing better videos that are not in my room with a flat iron and half rolled fucking half finished shades in my fucking background. Um, but speaking of which, I'm going to go smoke and take off all this makeup and go to sleep. I'm going to be editing my photos probably starting tomorrow, maybe even the day after, because I might need a day to kind of come down from this night. Um, but you can follow my projects page, Instagram.com slash Alora Sierra Projects, my personal page, Instagram.com slash The Alora Sierra. And I also started a new YouTube channel for Exit Life Press. I will try to put that link in the description box below so you can go subscribe to that. That will be the YouTube channel where all band and concert stuff um will go so basically if you don't want to like 
sit here and watch my whole get ready with me and whole like talking after a show and everything the whole documentary that I make in one night basically if you want to see just the bands and stuff you can go subscribe to that YouTube channel and you'll be good to go <sighs> is there anything else I need to plug before I wrap this video up oh yeah actually so really quick before I take my makeup off um, shout out to Combi Christ, the guys that let me come out and shoot the show tonight. Shout out to their publicist, um, even though apparently I wasn't on the list tonight, which is weird. Um, shout out to my friend Eric of Combi Christ. He's been in the band for so long. He's such an amazing guitarist. I will continue supporting him forever. And, uh, I just want to say thank you to him for signing these awesome shirts for me and my roommate. Um, also look at that. Look at that makeup I just got on it. That's my face. <laughs> That's my face coming off. That's how bad I'm sweating. <sighs> okay, well, we're just gonna... Anyways. <laughs> um, this is an awesome shirt. It matches my hair. It's so vibrant. The graphic is amazing. Um, at the bottom, you can't see it, but this is Hate Like Me. And it's awesome because I, I love band t-shirts and I used to have so much band merch but over the years of being homeless and kind of couch surfing it's either been stolen or I just never got it back or it's been lost over the years. So this is like my first piece of band merch as an adult. Um, and I have to start my merch collection all over again and this is the first piece. And now I have to get that makeup off of it afterwards. With that being said, like, subscribe, comment. Check out Comedy Christ, and I will see you guys in the next video. The next video will most likely be about the Falling in Reverse, New Year's Day, Ice Nine Kills, and From Ashes to New concert, which is on May 1st in exactly a week from now. Actually, it's 12 a.m., so it's in six days. <laughs> I have to photograph another show in six days, and I'm so tired. Okay. I know this outro was like me talking in a bunch of circles or over explaining things, but I didn't record a lot, so I feel like I kind of have to make up for it and talk about what happened during the night and why I couldn't record and so much is happening, but hopefully I'll try to record a little bit more at the New Year's Day show. I don't know. We'll see how secure he is, but whatever. All right, you guys, I'm going to finally wrap up this outro. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to share with your friends. Make sure to subscribe so we can finally get this channel monetized. And yeah, look at that. I, oh my god. What is on me? Oh my god, it looks like an A. <gasps> Bitch, that's weird. She spat an A on me and I'm just realizing this. Okay, nope. That's the end of the video. Good night, everyone.